Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome back to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I am your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are sitting down to have our second conversation with Josh Fuller, the CEO and founder of Matic Digital, a digital strategy and talent growth agency. So uh, super excited to have Josh back on today. We uh, we spoke last time about uh, expanding your business into new opportunities. And today we're gonna talk more about how to be more strategic with those teams and resources in your business so that you can become not only more productive, but ultimately more profitable. So. Thanks again for joining us today, Josh. Excited for another conversation. Yeah, it's great to be back. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Had a great time last week. And, uh, you know, I I got thinking about, you know, what would we talk about this time? And one of the things that I know, you know, you've you've expanded your own business in different areas. I mean, it's it's a, a, a new startup, what, less than a couple of years old right now? Yeah, right. September 21 is when we got rolling. Okay, so so awesome! Congrats on your early success, and and I wish you the best. You continue to grow. What have you learned from these experiences that you've had in this uh, venture so far? Yeah, um, fail fast. <laughs> um, you know, I've 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 learned from mistakes that you know they're going to happen. I, I don't fear them, um, but you know. I look at them as little investments into being wiser. So, um, yeah, do them and hopefully it don't cost too much. Uh, is, is a, and then, yeah, the second one is, is yeah, you know, the people I bring around, um, the, the, the people that, you know, you bring out a, a lot of times when you go from kind of a one person show to, to, to more, um, usually just hiring, uh, replacements of yourself and, and, Oh, I, I, I really don't want to deal with the books anymore. Let's get that handled. I, I can't do this much design and meet with clients all day. Let's get that handled. These projects are taking forever to run. Let's get a project managed. So you start looking at like little ways to replace yourself, but that's a, that's a slippery slope into, um, never being satisfied because the people you hire won't do it your way. And if you train them from the ground up, um, then you're not benefiting from their experience and, and, and their methodologies and, and thinking. So, um, I've really learned, I've learned that that was a fail fast moment for us. And, and we, um, really look for, uh, people that, that, you know, want to help shape the clay, uh, so to speak, you know, mold what Matic is, is doing. Um, we, we have gracious, wonderful clients that, um, uh, work with us and work with the personalities that, that we put on their projects. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's been huge. It's just like elevating the people around and, and not exactly just always focusing on the skill set they bring to the table, but the, the thinking that drives that skill set. Yeah. And it, you're in a unique boat where you, you're, you're actually embedding your staff into these organizations and having them be an active participant in day-to-day, um, operations, right? Yeah, yeah, we call that um, Matic Teams, and um, you know, this it's sort of sort of by mistake. <laughs> I uh, I was uh, recommended by by a colleague and advisor when I was getting rolling at, in twenty one. Said, yeah, you want to have um, s- some people um, around, uh, and you want to make sure that your clients know that hey, they can plug into your team um, if. Maybe you don't want to look at this as a project engagement. You just need support on some UI UX initiatives for the next few months. Um, you just need some kind of thinking and, and and some skin in the game. And versus a this project has a start. It's set out to do this. It should be done at this point. It should cost X. And yeah, we're gonna knock this out. Um, so I, I I got a call from uh, from some colleagues that were forming a uh, or a part of a, a forming fintech 
startup and, and he said, Hey, you mentioned you had a few designers on the bench. Um, we've been hiring and kind of, it's not going very well and recruiters are not really seeing us the kind of talent we need. So we, who you got? So we, I quickly created a few profiles for a handful of designers that have been working on Matic projects in, in checked their availability, made sure they would be okay with like, Hey, I want to propose you for this three month thing. Um, and, and, and you'll know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, they, they said they wanted one, they, they brought on four, um, uh, like immediately. And, and we were off to the races after that. And, and we ended up expanding that to it, it, Some of it was people that sit right here at Matic, but again, we were only a few months old at the time. So a lot of times I would say, well, I don't have a suitable QA director for your software team right now. Uh, but I, and they were like, well, look, you're finding us the best people. So, uh, it's your business to, 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 to have, if you want it, or we'll just call our recruiters. And I was like, no, no, I'll, let me, I got you. Swing. I'll take a swing. And, and so kind of rattled, you know, some cages and found a director of QA. And then it was a flutter developer and then a product owner and content and it just scaled and scaled. And I'm, I started to realize that, you know, um, got some phenomenal people pretty close to me in my network from the last 25 years and, um, and maybe not direct, but indirect. And, and I, I found that I really liked this pairing model. So yeah, we called it team pairing and, um, we support all kinds of clients with it. Um, uh, mostly, uh, uh, mostly onshore, mostly us. Um, but, uh, some clients have asked for us to start to build out a capacity in Latin America because the, um, it, it, it affords a different cost forecast and, and you get the same time zone and some really phenomenal talent. Um, so, so we've been building out, uh, some of those relationships as well. Um, so it's been a really exciting journey so far. Yeah, it sounds like it. So what are some of the challenges that you've run into from that where it's, it's like, you're not really a part of them, but you kind of are I'm sure you get drug into things, uh, the scope creep has got to be there too. Like now, what are we, you know I mean? Tell us about that. Yeah, for sure. I think it actually, uh, just to your lattice point, I, with team pairing, it sort of mitigates scope creep because the scope is really, it's time. It, it's time and dedication. It's not, um, we want to build X. Uh, it's whatever it takes. It, it, yeah, exactly. There. So we, with team pairing, it's truly putting the talent into that, client's environment, whether that be, you know, typically it's remote. Um, although it doesn't always have to be, but typically it's remote, uh, which opens up a much greater talent pool. Uh, they, they, they come in and they start joining that team's stand up schedule. Uh, they're in their chat environment or Slack environment. They're on their project initiatives. Matic, me, once I've done the initial discovery to kind of know what, what that client is going for, what team chemistry is like or what the focus area is, you know, are you, are you guys building an app or are you building a marketing website or are you building towards, um, just keeping an app running and you just, you need hands and you've had a hard time hire. Um, uh, there's a lot of variance for why people might want to go with a team pairing over like a full-time hire. Um, but yeah, there's no real scope creep. Uh, the challenges though that, that do happen is, um, I think, being able to uh, find a meaningful way, it's not so much a challenge that we've failed, it's something we work towards. It's finding a meaningful way to sort of stay engaged with the talent and with the client without getting in the way. Um, not, you know, we wanna, make, we wanna know enough to not, if a designer is working for a client team and it's a Matic Teams project uh, or engagement, we don't really have any say in the actual design, like, hey, this, the requirements say, we don't know the requirements. We shouldn't know the requirements. That talent is plugged in with the client team. They're talking requirements, but we can work with them in other ways to unblock. So you know, I'm a former creative director. So we, somebody like me could hop on with that designer and just give really unbiased input to like, okay, what's the challenge you were going for? And so we spent some time in the background, sort of unblocking ahead of client presentation, even just to, just to sort of give that additional support. Um, so I think the challenge is, is, is always making sure that, that our team, you know, it's easy when you have six or seven people going, but when you have, you know, 15, 20 people going, are we still supporting them in a meaningful way? 
and in a, in a way that also, also has a benefit to the client um, that makes you know our involvement um, worthwhile. And, and so far, the answer has been yes. I don't see scaling this beyond a. I, I don't see us becoming like an EPIM. I mean, they 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 provide people um, in this staff hour capacity cr across the world, and that's phenomenal. It's great that they do that. You can put on three hundred person teams for one client for six months, no problem. Consultants do this all day. Um, we're sort of trying to find the balance of, of the clarity of consulting with, uh, where, Hey, we're here, we live and breathe your problem and we're going to be working towards X goal. Um, and, and then the meaningful agency tethering that, that they get that support in the background as well. Yeah, it's very, very interesting and, and a little unique for sure. Uh, I, it, in a construction environment makes me think about like a, um, EPCM or may, maybe there's a project management company that's, that has resources that they send out to go manage construction projects and it's not their project. They didn't have anything to do with, you know, any of the negotiations of this, that, and the other. It's like, you're going to come in and manage this thing and help us get this thing built. Here's the schedule. Here's the, here's the, everything lined up. We just need you to make sure that everything is, is flowing smoothly and you, you keep knocking down barriers as they come up. And, uh, we'll help you any way we can. It, it very good parallel. And I mean, in the software world, uh, particular, especially in something like construction that usually is, is more and more increasing its dependence and usage and utilization of software to drive efficiency, to drive supply, to drive, you know, outcomes, um, you know, the, a perfect analogy for a, team, a good team engagement would be, uh, we've all gone through, if you have software, you've probably done a software migration of some kind or some kind of a, we're sunsetting a feature, we're rolling out a new feature, we're building a new feature, whatever those things are. Those things usually have a ramp uh, up and then a ramp down and, and then they're kind of in the back, they're done. They're, they're, they're in the rear view. Um, do you want to hire the engineers needed for a migration or or a, a new feature integration or something like that permanently knowing that this project has a beginning and end in your org or do you just want to hey we need we need a little more manpower than we have we need a little more umph for the next six months and what what we really think is, is really special again benefiting the the ic's but i think the companies too there's no there's no unexpected layoff because the project we hired you to do is done and we don't need you um you know, it, it, it's transparent. These people are independent by nature. They're they're hanging their hat with Matic, um, so that we can support finding the next suitable engagement that that that's going to be a success for them and for the client. But we go in. Everybody's eyes are wide open. This is this is we're here to work on this problem, get to this outcome, and you know, either extend to the next problem that client might have, or look for the next client fit. That that's kind of the nature of the beast. Yeah. So, uh, do you do you have an approach that that you lean on to find the right talent to fill these types of roles? Are you hiring jacks of all trades, or are you f hiring specialists that are you know sniper gonna get in and get the job done and and get out? Yes to everything, man. Everything you just asked. Um, no. So we did recently. Uh, historically, it's been uh, me, my network. And then finding ways to leverage the network of those that are, are working here. Um, and so we do some incentivizing of like, hey, if we like working with you, John. Who do you like working with that does this? <laughs> if I can, if, it, if it's a good fit. And then we, you know, we do obviously, if if it's technologists, we, we, we have some screening parameters in place for that. Some partners to help us on like a, a dev check um, or a code test. Uh, if it's creative, again, I leverage my, my as a, you know, with my background, I've brushed shoulders with a lot, so I can do a, a fair majority of soft, um, soft skills checks. And then for certain specialties, we, you know, leverage the partner. That was last year. It was a lot of, uh, of me and, and, and a couple of other people that were qualified to do this kind of curation and vetting this year, new sport. And we've actually hired a talent recruiter. Um, and so she's been, phenomenal at, at optimizing this process and, and, and increasing the scale of, of what, what and how we, we go about it. We brought in everything from, 
you know, um, really structured reference checks and and background checks. Uh, and because by way of partnership, I mean, we we had to do that once last year for a, a, a DOD engagement that was through an agency, not us. So, I mean, we partner with other agencies to build this stuff too. And, and yeah, you're working for the Department of Defense, your background is going to be checked. And so it was, but well, now we're starting to make that a little more status quo because, yeah, like our clients are inviting and essentially they shouldn't know the difference between their employees and a Matic Teams person, except that there's, there's, you know, usually a lot less red tape with a Matic Teams person because there's, there's no benefits. There's no, uh, all hands that they really need to be a part of. They, they are there to, to, to crush on the project and share the vision and, and realize the execution and then potentially just move on. Um, but yeah, so, so we, we, we've really sharpened the edges, but it, it's just old fashioned networking, um, at, you know, knowing, knowing where to go. We're not, we, we haven't built a proprietary hunting software or anything like that for finding talent. Um, I, it, every, every procedure, every software, every business, we're all, we're all humans creating these things. So yeah, um, at a certain point, uh, you know, most every, at, at this stage, everybody that's got a Matic email and, and is on a Matic engagement, whether it's at my studio, uh, building out, you know, the, on the agency side of the house or for these team pairing type types of business. Um, I know everybody I've met everybody. I, and we keep, we use Slack. I don't know if you guys use Slack, but we use Slack. To, yeah. So we use it in a lot of fun ways from just, there's a design community channel and we just air stuff we're doing and stuff we're working on. And we chat though. We do all hands where uh, somebody can lead a brown bag and talk about a project they were just on. We're, we're doing one with revenue and finance on Friday um, for that team. So, you know, going to discuss GM and GP and what all that means. And then everybody's rolling it. So we, we bring, and whether they're a Matic teams con consultant or, you know, our, um, project management assistant, everybody's a part of this community. So we, we do a lot to make the independent workforce feel like they have a home. Yeah. you you have a very unique business offering and you're just like anybody else. You're just solving problems, trying to help fill gaps and help serve your customers that are trying to fill their gaps. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. When I meet with a new customer, I very rarely, uh, start off with, okay, we do this or this, which are you? <laughs> yeah. Talk. We talk and, and I pretty quickly can get a picture of, um, would teams be worth leaning this conversation towards as, as a proper solution or would the agency? Um, capability be be the direction to go um and, and yeah I, it's it's so we definitely don't you know we qualify that but not at a from a sales lens we qualify it from like what's going to be best and what you know a lot of times teams can be a perfect solution for what a client's asking for or looking for um but sometimes they're going to need you know a full team we're in by the way teams can it doesn't just have to be a designer a engineer uh, i mean we had 14 people with one client last year working in different pods all over their org so um you know it, that works really well um you know to go beyond practitioner and into a full kind of squadron of people that have typically worked together already on something know each other and know how to go in and get it done um but all that gets qualified in, in discovery calls we don't ever really try and push any one thing over the other it's just about what what the best solution is now it's a it's a it's a whiteboard fill in the blank brochure right yep it really i mean yeah it is somebody try i was i was having a discussion with a with a colleague and it's and uh we were just talking about salespeople in our industry and uh i was like do you really you don't you don't sell in our industry you, you like there's no there's no product to playbook out. It's like you solution and, and their informed budget, <laughs> but it's not like, okay, well, here's the brochure and, um, oh yeah. So we're offering a special on, you know, brand strategy this week. <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. Uh, that's awesome. Well, this has been another fun conversation. I've uh, enjoyed learning more about your business and, what you're doing to scale it. I, I hope there's some lessons learned for our listeners that are looking to be a little more creative and innovative on how they 
fill those gaps in their business. And, uh, you know, what, what Josh is doing and, and probably other companies out there to try and help supplement your labor force, I think is, uh, is a great solution to a challenge in the labor gap that we have right now, you know, in the typical places that we're used to hiring people. So applaud you for your efforts and, and congratulations on your success. Well, thank you so much, Mike. It's really been great chatting with you and I hope we get to do it again sometime. Yeah, it's been fun. And we did do a little word game and we recorded two episodes and uh, uh, last week's episode, um, I had assigned Josh the word retrospective and, or I'm sorry, he assigned me the word retrospective. How'd I do it using that? Very, uh, very well. I think you got uh, at least three in that I, uh, by my count. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And, and, you know, in you being retrospective to last episode that we recorded, uh, I think you would be right. <laughs> I, I guess that's a four. Uh, but I gave you the word melancholy. Yep. And you used it pretty quick right out of the chute. And then I started using it. We both used it. We were. Or, yeah. Yeah. The hot potato game. That was great. Pretty fun. So uh, anyway, check out last week's episode if you haven't heard it yet with Josh as well. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. Looking forward to keeping in touch down the road. And maybe we'll have to have you check in with us again down the road when you've doubled your company size again. So. So November? <laughs> then you know, I, I'm not, I, I wonder when you were going to say, so that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Take care, man. Be well. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Bye. Thank you for joining us today on the Mobile Workforce Podcast, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today or were able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at workmax underscore. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and in turn, their life.